Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to share Deloitte interview questions and the experience of Deloitte interview. So let's get started. So the first question was, interviewer asked, which version of Java are you using in your application? So the answer was given like we are using Java 11. Then he asked like, why are you using Java 11? Why not Java 10 or 9 or 12 or 13? So the next question he asked, like, why are you migrating your monolithic application to the microservices? What all benefits you will get after migration? Will it increase the performance? Will it increase the customer base? Like how, what benefits you are going to get from this? And then he asked, like, what is string joiner? And in which version of Java was it introduced? And where can we use this? Do, uh, give me some example where you have used the string joiner. Then uh, interview question, I mean the programming question was asked. So he said like suppose you have a hash map. So the key of the hash map is like the name, name of the employee. Like suppose Ravi is there and value is, is H like Ravi 32. Then we have Arpit whose age is 33. Then we have Kunal whose age is 32. Then he asked like we have to convert this hash map in such a way that the key should be the age like 32 is the age and the value should be the name of the employees whose age is 32 like Ravi and Kunal these are comma separated right then you have 33 and 33 is the age and whose age is 33 Arpit so you have to do it by using the Java 8 stream then the another question was which was also based upon the hash map so the question was like suppose you have a hash map and the value of hash map contains another hash map and then the value of another hash map contains another hash map and it goes on and you have to iterate it till the end when I mean till the time you don't get the value of a hash map as a string okay suppose you are having like it goes on till 9 and the 10th uh, in the 10th hash map the value is string so you have to iterate through all and you have to tell what exactly the value is there in that string and what exactly the string value is and the next question was what is eventual consistency and then do you know about cap theorem so cap theorem is basically consistency availability and partitioning so consistency like uh, the two databases or the data which you are fetching at a particular time is it consistent with the actual one or not availability the, da uh, the database should be always available and partitioning is one of the way to partition your database so i mean at a particular time uh, these two of these three can be satisfied by any of the database like then the next question was when to use SQL and when to use no SQL okay so we were talking about the cap theorem right so the SQL it satisfies the two conditions of the cap theorem one is consistency and one is partitioning so the data whichever you will be fetching in from the SQL database that will be always consistent it will be always be the fresh data and in case of no SQL it satisfies the two conditions one is availability and partitioning there the data which you are fetching that can be eventual consistence that means that is going to get consistent in a later phase of time but at the particular time that can be consistent or cannot be okay so this is what the eventual consistency he was asking about then he said how can you improve the performance of your api then the answer can be like we can use the cache or we can use the i mean if it is our api is calling a database then we can use indexing and uh, we can use the uh, paging and sorting if we are fetching thousand of records and we went we can use the paging and sorting based upon the next uh, uh, you know page another hundred will be called and uh, or if it is like we can increase the number of database connections we can use hikari to increase the number of database connections and if we are performing some you know our api is performing some business logic then instead of stream we can use the parallel stream where the maximum number of cores of your cpu will come and they will perform those those actions so this is how we can improve the performance of an api and the next question was if you got any issue in the production what will be your first approach so this can basically depends like if we can check first we will go and check the logs and we will see if there is any you know database connection failure or something related to database or something has happened then we will try to fix that if that is not an issue and uh, then we can see like if any downstream system or some connection has been closed or something then we will check on that that will be our first approach if that is also not uh, the correct way then we can ask for the downtime 
I mean, we will send all the customers, like we will ask for the downtime and meanwhile, we will try to, you know, take the data from the production to the non cloud database. I mean, obviously with the masking data, we cannot take out the original data. We can mask the data and take out in the non cloud database and we will try to replicate the same and we'll try to put a hotfix to the production as soon as possible. Then the next question was, what is scope tag in Maven's form.xml? Like in the Maven and the form.xml, we give the dependencies, right? Like suppose we are giving JUnit or uh, AOP dependency or we are giving the JPI dependency. Then there is something called scope. Like there we can define the scope, like the runtime scope, like this but, uh, particular dependency will be available at the runtime and not at the uh, compile time. These kind of things, like there are six type of scope. You can go and check out on them. And then the next question was like Maven and Gradle, which is faster. So, I mean, so Maven, I mean, when we are adding any new dependency or trying to run our application. So in case of Maven, everything will be running again and again. But in case of Gradle, it performs the incremental running. I mean, incremental, what we say, uh, building. So like uh, suppose there is some 10 uh, dependencies are there and you are trying to add the 11th. So it will just run the 11th. The 10 which has already been done, it will not work on those. So then the next question was, if you get out of memory issue in production, what will you do? So yeah, these were all the questions which were asked. So if you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want any dedicated video on any of the interview question, I will definitely make some. Thank you.